Ready for the word of God? Close your eyes, lift up your right hand, let us pray. Our eternal God of mercy, once more, here we are in your house. We are more than happy, more than glad to always come before you in obedience to your word. That's it, we should not absent ourselves from the gathering of ourselves together. Knowing the Lord, we are not here because of any man. We are here because of you. You are faithful God. For every time we gather here in your house, Lord, you are here with us. Not once, not once have you forsaken us. For Lord, we thank you once again. As your word comes, Lord, I pray that your word will bring light, deliverance, will bring understanding and prosperity to everyone anywhere on the face of the globe that hear this word today in the name of Jesus. Let it bring strength, strength and power because of the grace that all you have given us in your son Jesus Christ. Thank you Lord once again in Jesus name and all the sins shall say a big amen. Amen. Let's all be seated. We are Zima, yeah, they yum to, and yum to, you would eat. Oh, crona, yeah, oh, she said, yeah, be free. Tablet or stool like Moses and the Ten Commandments. I have my, my message here on the 
tablet or stone. I'm, I'm not very much into the Bible. I'll see. All right. It says, uh, swipe up for face ID or enter passcode. Okay, let me enter the passcode. Ah, okay. Now, now I've got a pass, and I say what um, I have to I have to look for. What next? Uh, forgive me, I'm still, I'm still trying to get used to some of these things. So. Oh, okay, okay. There are some there's some nice picture here. Oh, all right, now I've got it. I've got it. And it's the same. It hasn't changed. Right. So it is telling me that the title for today's message is Strength in the Grace. Strength in the Grace. That's what it is telling me. Strength in the Grace. Strength in the Grace. And the, me- and the text, the scripture is um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. 2 Timothy 2, verses 1 to 7. Strength in the grace. And the scripture is 2 Timothy 2, verses 1 to 7. And I read from the New King James Version. I read it from the, the Bible, the true Bible, not from the, not from the tablet. You therefore... My son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the thing that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Verse 5. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Church, may the Lord give us all understanding in all things. Say a better amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, this was a letter written by the Apostle Paul to his son in ministry, Timothy. So the second letter he wrote to Timothy. Paul was in prison at that time and close, he was close to the end of his ministry and therefore the end of his life because ministry, anyone who is called by God continues in ministry until God calls him home. I don't believe in anything like retirement. As long as a person is strong and can stand and preach the word of God, as the years go on, the person gets better, and this thing seems to it goes so I have to be, I have to slap in it to come back to is that, is that how yours is? You have to be tapping it. Okay. Can I have somebody, can I have somebody ta- doing the tapping for me because by the time I walk here and back it will be off. <laughs> and then we'll see what we can do. You see, that's why it's good to have the good old paper. The paper doesn't go off. Praise the Lord. Yes, anyone you you want to help. You lock it. You can lock it. With a key. You have a key for locking it. Okay. I didn't know that. The time on it. The time on it. Okay. I, I didn't know. Wow. I thought you just come with a key and just lock it. It's only that. Okay. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank, thank God for the youth. <laughs> Our generation, we didn't even have mobile phones. We thank God for these things. Um, so where was I? Yes, um, he was therefore at the end of his life, therefore at the end of his ministry. And as you know, anyone who is genuinely called by God 
that does not retire from the work of God. Because there's so much work to be done at all times that there's nothing like retirement until God calls you. As long as you are strong, you can read and, and speak and preach and your, your cognitive uh, senses are okay, you continue. Amen. Amen. You see, um, such a time, when it comes to such a time as somebody who has spent the greater part of his life in ministry, or working on anything, can be business or, or anything, not just ministry, but something that has been dear to your heart, and you are putting so much effort, so much time, and you have seen that thing grow and become exactly as you want it to be. Now, when the time comes for you to depart, you don't just leave. Because otherwise, your work may all be in vain. So you want to advise and empower and counsel and direct those who take over from you. In the name of Jesus, asking God to give you power as to how to go about it, so that when you have left, all the work that you have done shall not be in vain. And I've seen many, many words come to vain after the departure of their so-called visionary. Ministries have, have just disappeared. Businesses have collapsed. Properties have been left unkept. Things have been destroyed because the visionary or the pioneer that God used to establish that ministry or so did not take the time to groom or to train others to take care after his departure. So, this was the situation of Paul at this time. Therefore, he wrote two letters to Timothy, who was then in charge of his efficient church that Paul himself had planted. Timothy was in charge and he was unsure that his work would be continued and not be in vain. In the book of 2 Timothy, in the the letters to Timothy, God gave to Timothy seven, seven instructions to be given to Timothy. Paul gave seven instructions to Timothy, as how the church should be continued so that the church will stand. So that the church will stand and grow. Not just a church standing so that people, many, will come and receive God, turn to God through Christ, through the church. You cannot accept God except you accept him through Christ. And you cannot accept God through Christ except in the church. The church is the only place where God's name is glorified, where God is worshipped, where God is praised. Without a church, there shall be no praise, no glory. God in this life, on this earth. Never Paul wrote seven instructions. And this one from the third, what we are going to say just from the third of all that, of the instructions that Paul Give to Timothy. Just say amen. amen. God be behind for Jesus. <laughs> so here was Paul, an old man, much more experienced in ministry, writing to instruct a much younger pastor, Timothy, as how to go about ministry so that the church will continue to be triumphant. Like I said, our text above forms the third of the series of instructions that Paul gave to Timothy. So he says, you therefore my son. He addresses him as my son. And in fact, he was, Timothy was Paul's son in ministry. Just like right now, I believe I have many sons in ministry and there are many more of you coming to be my grandsons and granddaughters in ministry. I didn't hear your amen properly. Amen. Clap your hands for yourselves. And he's telling you, be strong. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Strong here is not physical strength. It's not being a macho man. It's about spiritual strength. 
Because the work that Timothy was about to do, which Paul had been doing for decades, required spiritual strength. And if the leader didn't have spiritual strength, he was in no position to impart spiritual strength to the congregation, to the, to the, to the, to the church. What is in man, what is in you, is what you can impart. You cannot impart what is, what is not in you. So, Paul was determined, was desirous that Timothy should have spiritual strength. Be strong. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the thing that you have heard from me, among many witnesses, Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So it is to go on and on from Timothy, from Paul, sorry, from Paul, Timothy has heard. Timothy must make sure that he committed those things because there are witnesses who are watching him. Is this what Paul said? Is it not or not? Witnesses were there. Therefore, he must be careful to commit exactly those things to faithful men. Faithful men, not hirelings. Not men who are there because they want posts. Not men who are there because they want titles. Not people who are there because they didn't have anything to do, so they, they have not entered into ministry. But faithful men who will also commit them to others. So it was to go on and on and on and on. Until now, it has come to your turn. Just say amen. amen. Clap your two hands for Jesus. And then he says, you therefore, therefore you and the others who hear the word and the ones who receive must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Must endure hardship. We'll come to this day very soon. Because no one Engage in warfare, entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That's why soldiers live in barracks. They are pleasant for the military. They don't live in town. They are always ready. So that at the sound of the trumpet, they are ready to defend their nations. They therefore don't entangle themselves with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier, that Jesus Christ. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, you want to run in race or you want to be a boxer, you want to be a footballer, any form of athletics, there are rules. There are rules governing any form of athletics. You are not crowned. He is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. You cannot, you cannot win unless you compete according to the rules. If you, if you do not, you are disqualified. You don't, even, you don't even finish. You are disqualified. The hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say. He said, listen to what I've said. Consider what I say. And may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Just say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. So, Paul begins by saying, my son Timothy, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. I've said here before that, beloved, grace, anyone who has received genuine true grace receives power. Yes, we know what grace means. But grace has a certain element of spiritual power so that when God God bestows that grace upon you. It is not just grace, but it gives you power to do some things. Anything that God gives to us that we did not ask for, we don't deserve, we don't qualify for, why will God give it to you? Unless, except that God wants that thing to do something in your life. That's why God will give it to you, even though you don't qualify for it, even though you didn't work for it, God gives it to you because that grace must be able to accomplish something in your life. So if you and I are saved by grace, we are saved by grace. It is enough. It is not enough. You said, I'm a Christian, a believer. No, no, no. 
there's some power, and in fact, a lot of power bottled up in that grace that when you allow that power, that strength to work, you are able to do exploits. And may you all do exploits in the name of Jesus. So where is this strength? Where? You may ask yourself, where is this spiritual power located? Where can I find it? You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So we are now looking at the location of this spiritual power. Beloved, there are many believers, many, I would say probably the majority of believers go to church, worship God, but they are not really interested. They don't desire to have any spiritual power. Yes, they'll go through this life, live and go to be with the Lord in heaven. But life here on earth is a lot more than that. There's a lot more that goes with life here on earth than just going through the routine, day-to-day life of being a Christian, go to church, go home. The pastor preaches, yes, I've heard. You sing, you clap, go home. There's a lot more to it. And what is more to that, what God wants you to have is the strength, the power that is in the grace by which you have been called. Church, if you agree with me, clap your hands for Jesus. <clears throat> so, this power is in the grace. Power of God is in the grace. And you have all been called by grace. As long as you are called, as long as you know you have been called, your calling is by grace. And if so, then there's a purpose. There's a purpose for which God has called you. And God will not call you for a purpose without giving you the power to accomplish that purpose. God will always equip you. God will always supply whatever, he, whatever you need. God will always protect you, anoint you, and direct you so that the grace that he has bestowed upon you shall not be wasted, shall not be in vain. And that is why in many of the kingdom parables, many of the kingdom parables, the servants were required to give an account. And those who gave very good accounts were promoted. They were praised. And those who had no account to give at all are the parable of the, of the talents. No account. They were rebuked. And what was meant for them was being taken and given to those who had a very good account to give. So may you all have a wonderful, glorious account to give to Jesus. Amen. Say another amen. amen. So now, spiritual power is in the grace. And we have all been called by grace. <laughs> Hello? Now, this power, this grace is in Jesus Christ. So we have spiritual power in grace, and the grace is in Jesus Christ. We all know about electrical power, electricity. It does a lot of things for us. It's it's, it's power. One of the the, um, energies in physics, electricity, it has power. But how do you get electricity? It has been provided. But unless you take your appliance and you look at a socket, socket the mains on the wall. You know that's where the, the electricity is. So you have to get a correct kind of socket or plug. Plug it in and then connect it to your appliance, whether electric ion or kettle, whatever, before you can receive the power. We know, we all know that the electrical power is being channeled through the socket on the wall, which you call the mains. But as long as your electric ion is here and the mains is there, you don't get the power flowing into your electric, electric ion or your electric kettle or these even electric vehicles, EVs, unless you plug it in. Therefore, you have to plug it into Christ Jesus. Through the grace, the grace has been given to you, 
The power is in the grace. The grace is in Christ Jesus. You might plug into Christ Jesus. Church, and may we all plug into Christ Jesus. Amen. Clap for two hands for Jesus. <laughs> Hello? Coconut. Let's say coconut. Coconut is a tropical fruit. If you are listening to me from Australia or uh, Canada, uh, Canada, there are no coconuts there. But there are plenty of coconuts in Ghana. Coconut fruit. Coconut fruit. Inside, coconut fruit, there's some sweet juice, which you call coconut juice. And the coconut itself, the coconut um, itself is also there. But to get to it, you have to climb coconut tree. If you want, you have to climb up. Pull out the coconut fruit and then peel, peel the skin off. When you peel the skin off, you come to some hard parts that you cannot just bite with your, with your, with your, with your teeth. You have to crack it open. And it's not until you crack it open will you get access to the juice or the coconut itself. You have to crack it open. So in the process of getting anything, there is a process. There's a process. And this is more so with getting power from God. May you therefore get power from God today. Amen. If you are in SCAC watching us, listening to us anywhere in the world, and you want God's strength, divine power, may you receive it today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Church, let's clap our hands for Jesus Christ. <coughs> now, <coughs> Romans 1, verse 7. Romans chapter 1, verse 7. Goes Romans chapter 1, verse 7. Again, Paul writing to the church in Rome. He says in Romans 1 7, to all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you. We have seen this many times, but have we ever wondered what does grace to you? Grace to you. We are already called by grace. By grace you have been called. But then he said, grace to you. So there's a lot more in that grace than just God calling you by grace. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And may grace be to you all this morning. In the name of Jesus. Grace means, as you know, grace means undeserved favor. Favor or blessing that you don't qualify for, and yet it has been given to you. Grace means receiving the blessing that you do not qualify for. You don't qualify. In fact, you are the least of all. You don't qualify. You, don't, you are not worked for. Given to you not because of anything, not because of your handsomeness or your education or because of your, of your family background. It has been given to you. So no one boasts about grace. Nobody boasts about grace. Now, it means power. Grace, therefore, also means power or strength that you normally not have. The, if you are looking at the meaning of grace and that in grace is bottled power or divine strength, that means that God is also giving you and giving me power, strength that you don't qualify for. A lot of times we look at ourselves, oh, I, 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 it's not me. You know, he is all right, but not me, not I. No. That you, are not, you have not worked for. It is all in the grace. And the grace is in Jesus Christ. And therefore, if you are a Christian, a believer in Jesus, and you are in Christ Jesus, then the grace is in you, then... It follows automatically that if you are knowledgeable, you understand these things, the Paul said, may you understand these things. Then you begin to tap into that strength. Hello? You see, as a man, as a man or as a woman, 
as human beings, you are not stronger than your weaknesses. No man is stronger than his weaknesses. No man. And we all have weaknesses. And the weaknesses always make us weak. <laughs> weaknesses make us weak. A lot of times we look at our weaknesses. We look at what we cannot do more than what we can do. And therefore, our weaknesses rule over us. Our weaknesses overpower us and we live a life of weakness. By ourselves, we cannot be stronger than our weaknesses. And if weaknesses are weak, then by nature, man is weak. And the majority of men on earth at any time throughout the centuries are weak. Weak. They were born weak, lived through weakness, and died weak. Psalm 6 verse 2. Let's go to Psalm, Psalm 6 verse 2. Psalm 6 verse 2. This thing is, is there are some lights flashing. Is that how some, lights, some lights are flashing over it? Is it because of the, my sound or like lightning? You know, some lights are. Is that normal? So can I go on? It's not going to explode in my face. No. Okay. Psalm 6, verse 2. It says, Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. The psalm is speaking. O Lord, heal me. My bones are troubled. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Why? Because I am weak. Without your mercy, without your help, without your strength, <laughs> cannot do anything. O Lord, heal me. For my bones are troubled. My bones are troubled. But God, through the grace that is in Christ Jesus, gives strength and power to man. Man by nature is weak. But God, through the grace that is in Christ Jesus, gives strength and power to man. Now, go with me to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah 40, verse 28, 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. And listen to this. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 23. Says, have you not known and have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is, we nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. To those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May all these be upon you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God, our God, is, is, is strength. And if it's in you, you should give that strength. You should receive that strength. In Jesus' name. And 2 Corinthians 12, 9 to 10. 2 Corinthians 12, Verses 9 and 10. This is Paul writing to the Corinthian church. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 and 10. And he said to me, that God said to Paul, My grace, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in knees, 
in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I don't know how many of you have thought of it before. That is all because of grace. Paul had a problem. He wanted God to take that problem away so he'd be perfect. And God said, no, no. <laughs> My grace, the grace, that, that the, grace I've given, the grace I've given to you is more than sufficient. You have the grace. There's a lot of grace on you. Church, and may God's grace be multiplied upon you. Yeah. It's sufficient. Ignore that problem. Ignore that issue. Just concentrate on the grace. My grace is sufficient for you. God said, for my strength, God's strength is made perfect in weakness. You see, man is weak. Man is weak. So, when God's strength comes into the weak, and the weak becomes strong, it makes God's strength is more, is more easily seen. It, is, it, it makes it sharper. The contrast is clear. Uh, 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 this fellow who was a nobody, now look at him. Because the grace of God upon him, look at how, he, how his business is prospering. Look at how his family, everybody in the family are doing well. Look at, look at how he's blessed because of their grace. We know of this man called uh, Obedidom in the Old Testament. He was minding his own business. When uh, David, with all, the, with all the mighty men of Israel, anybody who matters, were carrying the ark of the covenant of God to Jerusalem with pomp and pitch, with singing and all kinds of things. Everybody was happy. And then something happened and God struck Uzzah. Uzzah was not supposed to touch the ark. But in touching it, God struck him and he died there. And fear came upon the people. In fact, I was there, David himself was afraid. That day, David feared the Lord. So David said, I cannot bring this ark that is killing people into my house. So they, where can we take you to? Oh, there's a, a guy here called Obedidom. He's a farmer. In fact, he, he said I was even a black man. Let God kill him. Let the ark kill him and all his family. So we, we will be spared. Uzzah has been killed. Uzzah, as we, as we know. Uzzah, mighty man of valor, killed for touching the ark. So Obedidom was there when they came, they brought the ark to his house. Can we imagine if it were you? This ark has just killed Uzzah. But you have no choice. We are leaving it here with you. Even if you die, you doesn't matter. You don't, your death doesn't matter. Nobody knows you. But Uzzah, we knew. The whole Israel knew Uzzah. Now Uzzah is dead. So they left the ark with Obedidom. The ark was there only three months in the house of Obedidom. The Bible said, God bless but you don't because of the presence of the ark in his church. May God bless you in the same way. Yeah. May the grace bless you in the same way. Yeah. God began to bless Obedidom to the extent that now nobody ever fell sick in his house. His poultry, his chicken, who were giving, uh, were, 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 they were laying eggs, one egg in six months. Now, one, one what do you call layers, eh? One layer was laying as about 10, 12 eggs in one day. He became rich. And you know, for we are seeing. Then they went and told David that, hey, David, do you know what? How God had blessed Obedidom? God said, what? God said, what? So now the grace which left Uzai and therefore he died is now Obedidom in his household. So now David went and brought the ark with confidence to Israel. Praise the Lord. Just say grace. Say grace. So it's not just being called grace, but if you are called grace, may your grace be 20 times. Praise the Lord. You are not called grace for nothing. There's power in your name. Power for Jesus. So now, God said, my grace is sufficient for you. I called you Paul by grace. I anointed you by grace. I gave you what to do among the Gentiles by grace. I'm protecting you by grace. In that grace, there are a lot of things 
that you should consider more than the, the thorn in your flesh. What, what, are, what are you complaining about? Yes, you may, be, you may be living in poverty. Yeah, God knows it. But once you are called by grace, <laughs> there's something much more valuable than the poverty that you are talking about. Now, poverty is a weakness. But the grace is more powerful than the poverty. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may even have some sickness, like Paul had. If God were to heal you today, you will not probably see you in the house of God again. You will see you in the house of God again. But the grace and this power is more powerful than that sickness that God has not healed you of. Therefore, may the grace today heal you of that sickness. In the name of Jesus. Whatever is happening, the negative things, the grace that's in Christ Jesus... It's a lot more powerful, a lot more beneficial, a lot more everlasting than that thing that we moan and cry about. Today, may we stop moaning and crying in the name of Jesus. Clap your two hands for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Therefore, Paul now says, oh, is that the case? I didn't know this. But now, therefore, most gladly, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. And I'll boast. I'll boast about my poverty. I'll boast about my sickness. I'll boast about the things that I thought were negative in my life. Because these negative things are what will bring into sharp contrast the power of God, the anointing of God in the grace that's in Christ Jesus upon my life. So that's what Paul is saying. He said, oh, I didn't know this. Now I know. Said, May you know today. In the name of Jesus. Therefore, he said, now I take pleasure. The thing that I was crying about, things I was boasting, I was, I was, not, I was having sleepless nights over, things that were making me lose weight. Now I'll take pleasure in my infirmity. Now, I'll now be, it will be, may they let them continue forever. Now I'll have pleasure in those things. In reproaches, let people shame me. Let people talk b- bad things about me. Let people speak evil about me. And now I will take pleasure in those things. In reproaches. In knees. Yes, we shall always have knees. In my knees, I will still take pleasure. I need some things. I'm, I lack some things. But now, I will take pleasure in those things. In persecutions. Afflictions. In distresses. For Christ's sake. Then Paul says, for now I know that when I am weak, that is when I'm strong. Hello? Yeah. Then I said that, oh, sometimes it's good to be poor. You, you are laughing. You know it's good to be poor? Oh. You just, I thought you just said that it's, it's difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Do you want to enter the kingdom of heaven? And then be poor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know what Paul is saying? He said, in need. <laughs> because when I'm weak, now I know that, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm strong as an apostle. All the anointing, all the revelation, all the, the, the miracles I've been working, it's because of my weakness. The weakness is what has brought the, the power of God upon me. And therefore, I must learn how to live with weakness so that the power of God shall be seen always in me. Church, may God's power be seen always in your lives. In the name of Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Hello. Praise the Lord. In distresses, in persecutions. Philippians 4, Philippians 4, 12 and 13. Philippians 12. So Philippians chapter 4. Verses 12 and 13. Paul again writing the Philippian church. The church in Philippi says, Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. I know how to be abased, and I know how to be how to abound. Everywhere in all things I have learned both to be full. And to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is Paul. Paul says, I know. He says, 
In other words, he had been obeyed before. I know how to be obeyed. I know how to be in lack. I know how to be in need. I know how to be impoverished. I know how to not have anything. I've been through it. And I know how to abound. I know how to have prosperity. I have known all, both prosperity and poverty. I know them all. I've learned, he says, everywhere and in everywhere in all things, I've learned both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. Then he goes on to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Whether he's abased, whether he's lacking, whatever he is, and whether he's abounding, whether he's prospering, because of the strength of Christ that you are bringing to him, he can do all things. May you be able to do all things. May you be able to prosper your business. Hello? May you be able to bring healing to your own bodies. Amen. Yesterday, where, was it? where were we? Um, where were we here in that, uh, that uh, Osofu was praying for people? You know, one of these prayed for me, pastors, on, on, on radio. People were calling. People were calling. I think on the airport, from the airport to the house. Yes. When the car from the airport to the house. And uh, this man was not, you, a woman, a woman who's not like a man, so prophetess. And people were calling. And when the question said, what do you want the Lord to do for you? What do you want the Lord to do for you? He said, oh, I want my business to prosper. And say, may your business prosper. Amen. And he said, go, your business, your business has already prospered. By the way, come and see me tomorrow. The other person will call, yeah, what do you want? Oh, I want God to do this for me. May the Lord do it for me. See me tomorrow. If the Lord had done it for you, why does he have to see you tomorrow? What for? Another person will call, crying, crying, yeah, what can I do? Uh, pray for my husband. He say, go, oh, your husband is healed in Jesus' name. He's healed, but come and see me tomorrow. If the husband is, he- is healed, why do you want to see her tomorrow for? And then they'll give the number, zero, zero, two, zero. <laughs> two, two, zero. One, zero, zero, one. <laughs> you know, they give the number on radio. And what has that got to do with the word of God? Giving telephone numbers. On, on the, what, 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 what kind of nonsense is that? It's because people want to get blessing, they want to get miracles, but they see the power of God is vested in somebody they have never seen before. They only heard, have heard of him on radio. And therefore, he declared that you are healed. To me, it's, that's, it, it's nonsense. And yet, they believe it. Then they go and then they get, they get ripped off. They get charged. They get duped. They get impoverished. Hello? But in FCAC, whether in my lifetime or after I've gone, it shall never be so. Which I do you agree with me? Yeah. After my departure, it shall never be so. Otherwise, I'll come back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Clap your two hands for Jesus. <laughs> Remember Ephesians, Ephesians 6. Remember Ephesians 6. 10 to 13. Remember. That remember Ephesians 6 10, 13. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. And may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. Now, how do we receive, therefore, this spiritual strength? Maybe you're asking yourself, I want it, but how do I get it? How do I get it? Let's go to 2 Timothy, our text again. 2 Timothy 2, verses 1 onwards. 2 Timothy 2, 1 to, 3, 1 to 7. Now, Paul in verses 2 to 7 lists seven things 
he gives a list of seven things that, if followed, would definitely lead to the believer possessing spiritual strength in Jesus' name. Seven things he lists here. And I'm going to go through them quickly with you. Sometimes he uses symbolism, he uses something to represent what he's talking about, like a soldier, the farmer, you know. He uses symbolism so that you remember it more easily for the ease of remembrance, so that you remember it. But he lists seven things. Now, verse 2, And the thing that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Now, Paul knew that Timothy was faithful. And that's why Timothy received from Paul. So we're talking about faithfulness. Shall I say faithfulness? Number one is faithfulness. Having faith and also being truthful, being reliable. If you're yes, let your yes be yes, your no be no. Faith and being truthful, reliable, trustworthy. So Paul knew Timothy was faithful. But he said, now, commit it to faithful men, not just anybody. To faithful men. And because these are faithful, they also make sure they commit it to faithful men. And on and on and on and on. So, church, number one is faithfulness. Church, church say faithfulness. faithfulness. Clap your hand for Jesus. <laughs> faithfulness. Mm. Hello? Without faithfulness, the gospel cannot be propagated. The gospel cannot be passed on. We need faithful men. In your business, without faithful workers, the business cannot prosper. Therefore, if you want to, if you want to commit some important part of your business, somebody, look for a faithful person. Somebody that, whether rain or shine, will show up for work. Rain or shine will come. Somebody will not say, at all because it's raining, say, oh, but it has rained. Where are you? Oh, but it has rained. Can't you see it is raining? Faithful men. If you want advice, go to those who are faithful. Those who will be truthful, trustworthy. Those who are reliable. Whatever you are doing, you want somebody to help you to achieve that thing, look out for faithfulness. Shall I say faithfulness? Many businesses, many things fail because of lack of faithful people. Commit that thing to his hands and he will disappoint you. If you are not lucky, even steal from you and take take away your 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 your, your birthright. Faithfulness. So it's also in the word of God. Be faithful. Faithful to God. Faithfulness, first of all, to God. Be faithful to God. That is it. Be faithful to God. You cannot be unfaithful to God and expect God to give you power in the grace. They are called you by grace. And in that grace, there's power, there's strength. But God will look out for your faithfulness. Even if he gives it to you, can you how, how will you handle it? Will you give that power, looking for money, being pompous, arrogant? Will you use it to just raise yourself? Yeah, say again, faithfulness. faithfulness. Number two, endurance of hardship. <coughs> enduring hardship. Perseverance. Perseverance. Perseverance in tribulations. Endurance in hardships. Perseverance in tribulations. And here, Paul, like he's a good soldier. A good soldier. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endurance. Many of us give up. <laughs> and that's why God will not give it to you at once. God doesn't give they give it to you at once. It gives you step by step. And you have to pass the test for every step before you move on. God knows where he's taking you to. He knows where he's taking you to. Where he's taking you from. Where he's taking you. You have to pass the test. Endure. Hardships will come. Tribulation, persecutions will come. But you have to endure. You have to persevere. And move on. Endure. Persevere. And move. As a good soldier, a good soldier, when they say charge, charge in battle, in battle, training. I was watching a clip about a, a, I don't know where, a female soldier in training, and she was supposed to jump. Somebody sent to me, jump, uh, uh, they were doing the, uh, 
jump, jumping. And when, when she looked at her, she said, hey, you know, <laughs> when it was her time to, to jump from that height, she looked at how high the thing was, hey, I'm already dead. A soldier, you are, a soldier if, if you die, aren't you a soldier? I'm supposed to die. Foundation. And they were pushing her, I push her, I Finally, she sat down, not jump. Hello? Hardships, endurance, perseverance, afflictions, tribulations. As a good soldier, a good soldier, when they say charge, know that you are, you are not alone. You are in a company or you know, a squadron, or I mean, you all have to charge. You face bullets. The enemy is far not, but I don't, you don't say, oh, I'm going back. We have to charge. And that time, as a good soldier, that's what I've been trained for. You have to march on. If you are killed, you, you died in battle. You died in battle. You, 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 you are given an honorable burial. And if you're a Christian, you go to be with the Lord. Then you don't, the, bullet, the bullets will have been taken out of your body anyway. You don't go to heaven with bullets in your body. Praise the Lord. Glorify body don't have bullets. Hallelujah. As a good soldier, may, may we all be good soldiers. Amen. Clap your two hands for Jesus. You know, what we are told in Acts chapter 14, verses 21 and 22. Acts 14. Acts 14. We know it already. Acts chapter 14, 21 and 22. Acts 14, 21. And when they had preached the gospel to that city, and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4. So that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Church, is that in your Bibles? Then say amen. The third thing that you need to do if you want to actually activate, activate this strength or power that is in the grace upon you located in Christ Jesus is separation from the world and separation to God. Separation from things of the world and separation to things of God. Separation from the world separation to God. Separation from the things of the world and separation to the things of God. You know, you cannot be neutral. When you are separated, you know, everybody has to be in, in, a, in a location. Separation from means you are leaving that place. Separation to means you are going to the new place. So it's separation from the world and separation to God. Separation from the things of the world and separation to the things of God. Period. There's no other way. There's no other way. You cannot circumvent or go around this process. Separation. Just say separation. You cannot have one foot here and one foot there. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Therefore, verse 4. Verse 4, 2 Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 4. Says, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. We are engaged in spiritual warfare. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers. Therefore, you cannot entangle yourself with the things of this world and expect that God will give you the strength, the power that is in the grace. That is, the grace is already there. But you have to do, you have to separate yourself. Desire to please God through Christ. You must desire to please Christ. A desire to please Christ. A desire to please Him. 
desire to please him. Those of you who are working and you have bosses, don't you desire to please your bosses? Hello? If you are working in an office or in a factory, whatever, don't you have a desire? Don't you always want to please your bosses? Yes, you want to. Because he employed you, he's, pay, he's paying you, he's giving you that job. Therefore, you do your best to please him. Please him. Therefore, when he calls you to his office, you go and you stand. He's sitting here and you stand. You don't go and then immediately put your chair and then sit down and cross. Do you cross your legs and put your legs on his table? Do you do that? And can you do that? You can't do that. When they call you, go and, you, and as you stand, as he's looking at the fire, you are standing, waiting for him. You want to please him. Give me that immediately. Yes, boss. Bring that. Oh, yes, boss. You are supposed to close at 5 o'clock. I say, today, today we are closing at 6. Do you say for me, I'm I will close at 5 o'clock. Do you say that? Because you want to please him. Boss, you say we should close at 5 o'clock. About 5 o'clock. I'm not, I'm not closing at 6 o'clock. <laughs> Hello? Praise the Lord. Because he has enlisted you. In the same way, when Christ says, when the word of God is saying this, and you are saying a different thing, how can you please God? When God's word is saying one thing, and you say, for me, God, this is, what, this is how, well, how I do it. I don't care what your word says. I mean, I'm doing it this way. You are not interested in pleasing God. You don't please him at all. <laughs> now, verse 5. Look at, look at verse 5. And also, if no one competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. According to the rules. So, number five. Live your Christian life according to God's laws and not by your own choices. Not by your own choice. That's why we are bond servants. We are bond, bond servant means, doesn't mean that you're a slave. You are a servant, but that, that, that servanthood is by your own choice. That you may please your master, our master Christ Jesus. You and I, we are servants. We are called bond servants. We, we've signed a bond with God by our own choice. Not by slavery. Not by slavery. We are bond servants. And as a servant, you have to live according to the rules of your master. Live by the rules of God. And not by your own choices. You don't take, selectively take part of the Bible to abide and the rest of the Bible you throw away. When the rest of God's word, you just ignore. I like this part, this part I don't like. I remember we went to Swedru, or no, no, we went to Bodjuasi many years ago, and we met this man who came to us. He joined us in our service. The rest of us, we were chatting with him. And he said, oh, which church are you from? That time from Word Miracle Church. He said, which church are you from? He said, we are from Word Miracle Church. I said, ah. I, he said, I like the word. The Word Miracle Church International. I like the word, but the miracle I don't like. I like the church, but the international I don't like. <laughs> and it was very clear. And nothing could change his mind. The moment he said we are from Word Miracle Church International, he said, oh, I see. I like the word. Yeah, the word, I like that part. But the miracle part, I don't like it. The church, I like the word church. But the international, I don't like it. So let the church be in Bodrias alone. Hello? That is how many Christians approach the word of God. They don't live according to the rules of God. They live by their own choices. They take what they like, the one that they don't like, they throw away. May God give you the power that is in the grace. When the power is upon you, you want to tap into that power, you don't select. You don't live by choices. In Jesus' name, and of course, working hard. You have to work hard. Just say hard work. He said, the hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops. In part of all this, everything that you do, do it according to the best of your ability. Do it by the best of your ability. Work hard. Pray hard. If you are praying, pray hard. Plan well. Three things I leave with you today. 
pray hard, work hard, plan well. If you want to prosper, if you want the power and the grace to empower you to prosper, prosper in what you are doing, you have to pray hard. Just say prayer. You have to work hard. And then when you have prayed and worked hard and what you, you get, you also plan well. You plan. You don't live anyhow. Vigilant, sober, plan well. In everything that you do, plan very well. In Jesus' name, just say amen. amen. And you'll be the first as a farmer. I don't want to go into that. You know how farmers, how they work hard? Go to their villages. Hard-working farmer. You'll be the first to partake of the crops. And then he said, in all these things, wisdom is the principal thing. In all these, wisdom is the principal thing. He said, consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. May, church, may God give you understanding. May God give you understanding. You must be ready to receive understanding. You must be open for under, to understand, for understanding. Ignorance is bad. In fact, my father used to say that ignorance is a disease. Was it? Ignorance is a disease. Ignorance is a disease. That's my father's, my father's motto. Ignorance is a disease. No one must live in ignorance. Live by understanding, live by wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. So Paul ends this exhortation by saying that Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Church, may you have understanding in all things. Amen. Let's go to Colossians 1 9. Quickly go to Colossians 1 verse 9. Colossians 1 9. Colossians 1 9. For this reason, we also, since that day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to add that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I was talking to a very highly educated man some time ago and he was, he was angry and with the way we charismatics we worship. He said that we don't understand anything at all. We charismatic, we Pentecostal don't understand. We lack understanding. <laughs> that was his point of view. We lack understanding. We don't know anything. In fact, he said that we are the ones who are destroying the church. <laughs> you see what ignorance can do? Ignorance is really a disease. And he was highly educated. Education and understanding have nothing to do with each other. The two, in fact, are diametrically opposed. Unless you bring them together, they are mutually exclusive. Luke 24, 44 and 45. Luke's gospel. Luke 24, 44, 45. Luke, the 24, the 44, the 45. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things might be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they may comprehend the scriptures. Before they, they lack understanding, they, though they have been with him, they lack understanding. There are many who are Christian, but they lack understanding. They don't understand anything. He opened the understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Today, I trust, I'm trusting God that your understanding has been opened to understand the word grace, that there's strength in grace, and grace, the grace is in Christ Jesus. In conclusion, conclusion, Second Samuel, Second Samuel chapter twenty-two. Second Samuel, chapter twenty-two. 
verses 38 to 40. 38 to 40. Second Samuel 22, verses 38 to 40. Listen to what is written here. Second Samuel said, I have pursued my enemies and destroyed them. Neither did I turn back again till they were all destroyed. And I destroyed them and wounded them so that they could not rise. They are falling under my feet. For you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose against me. Listen to that. For you have armed me with strength. And how will God arm you with strength? It means that you were, before you were weak. It's God who armed you with strength. Then may God arm you all with strength. In your trading, may God arm you with strength. In your jobs, may God arm you with strength. In your marriages, may God arm you with strength. In your finances, may God arm you all with strength. In all things that you do, may God arm you with divine strength. He has destroyed his enemies. He has wounded them. He did not turn back again till they were all destroyed. Verse 39, and I have destroyed them and wounded them so that they could not rise. They are falling under my feet. For you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose against me. Amen. Amen. So strength in the grace. Strength in the grace. And I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. So by grace, in Jesus' name, again, amen.